On this video, I'm gonna ask one of the most sober questions we seldom wanna confront. What if your dreams don't come true? I wanted to cover this topic because I think it's very relevant and timely. We live in a very me-centric world. We use phrases like, the universe is working for you, and you could do and be anything you wanna be. You remember hearing that in school a lot? But what if that's not quite true? What if you can't be anything you wanna be? And furthermore, what happens when you hit that wall and you realize that maybe your dreams aren't going to come true? You know, they say the average American changes careers five to seven times in their lifespan, meaning that people are jumping, not just from job to job, but actually jumping from career to career. Now, I'll tell you guys my first dream that I wanted to be, and I really believe this was gonna happen. From about seventh grade to about 10th grade, I really believed I was going to be in the NBA. That's all I was about. I would train super hard. I got these silly, stupid jump soles that you attach onto your feet that were supposed to help you improve your vertical. I would be out there right after school. I was hitting the gym, doing all these different things, and really, really, really believing that I was going to be a professional basketball player. And then my sophomore year, it finally hit me like a ton of bricks where I realized that I was five foot eight or nine at the time, and I was white. <laughs> and it hit me when I got cut from my junior varsity basketball team. And a lot of times people say, well, Michael Jordan got cut. First of all, Michael Jordan got cut as a freshman from his varsity basketball team. I was a sophomore who should have been playing JV and I got cut from my JV basketball team. And at that moment it hit me, you're probably not gonna be a professional basketball player. Like that's just not in the cards for you. Maybe it's from a genetic standpoint, maybe timing, all kinds of different variables, right? Height, whatever you wanna call it, coaching. I just knew, okay, this isn't gonna happen. So I opted out for the next best option, which is to become a professional rapper. And sophomore year, I was like, I'm gonna do music. This is what I'm gonna do. And my dream evolved, right? My dream evolved. And I believed that at some point, I was going to be a famous and rich rapper. Funny, right? From professional basketball player to famous and rich rapper the odds of making it an either or are like the same, right? So long story short, I do music full time. It's awesome, man. My, my wife gets to stay home with our three-year-old son. We live in Southern California. It's fantastic. I'm not rich and I'm not famous, but I get to do what I love and that's pretty fantastic. But I was driving home from Vegas. I was at the Grow With Video conference from Sean Cano. If you guys didn't see my previous video, I'll, I'll link it up. Super dope conference. I was driving home from Vegas and I was listening to an interview on The Breakfast Club. I love watching The Breakfast Club. And it was an interview, a brand new interview with the artist Russ. I like Russ's music, but I think I'm one of the people that probably loves his interviews more than I love his music. His music is great, but I think his interviews and his insight is really good. And so he has an album coming out and him and Charlamagne were talking about this album and the album's called The Zoo. And it's all about the music industry. And they started talking about the implications of having millions and millions of people who have access to you now because of social media and, and having that many voices speak into you. And then Charlamagne was like, man, I don't think we're supposed to have that much criticism and that much feedback. People either they love you or you're getting death threats. You're either the greatest or you should go kill yourself. And Charlamagne was talking about that, that he has to be very careful with social media. And then Russ went on and on and on about the music industry and how fake it is and how a lot of your favorite rappers are actually broke. A lot of your favorite rappers aren't making the money you think they're making and that it's one of the most toxic, terrible industries to be a part of. And I, I knew some of this, right? Like I've done a little bit of business with major labels. I worked with musicians of all calibers. I got friends that are on major labels. I got friends that have made it really, really, really big in terms of the music industry. And at that moment, I, I was reflecting about my friends who quote unquote made it. At that moment, I was reflecting on my interactions with major labels and knowing that I kind of drew the line in the sand. Of, that's not nothing I want to be a part of that world. And I was so grateful that God didn't allow me to quote unquote make it and to live out my dream in the way I thought I was supposed to be doing it. I thought I was supposed to be rich and famous and all these different things. And Russ kept coming back and he kept saying, man, 
this isn't for me. I don't want to do this. This is terrible. I'm not into it. Uh, I got a couple more albums and then I'm going to fall back. Because what's happening with him is for some reason on social media, it's became a thing to like say F Russ, F Russ. Nobody likes Russ because he's a polarizing figure, because he's very outspoken. And he has a lot of things he wants to say and a lot of things he wants to expose. And I identify with some of that. I think there's a place and time to expose different things about the music industry or just speaking truth and adding value in general. You're going to upset people. And so he was just talking about the tie-in that mental health has into this and artists being criticized and then becoming insecure and then dealing with all these different things. And I was like, man, I'm so thankful to God that I didn't quote unquote make it in that regard because I may not have the most money, I may not have the biggest house, I may not have the nicest car, but man, at the end of the day, I'm happy. If you could have 50,000 followers on Instagram, or let's just say 50,000 followers across all platforms and make 500,000 a year, or you could have a million followers across all platforms and make a million dollars a year, which one would you rather have? See, because the quality of life doesn't really change much from making half a million to making a million. But you know what does change from having 50,000 to a million followers is the amount of scrutiny, is the hassle of being famous and popular, the negativity, the energy that you're gonna get from so many more people. And the question becomes, those of us that aspire to be artists, do we aspire to impact people and to help people? Or are we just desiring to be famous and to be rich and to be praised? Because that isn't the healthiest thing for your spiritual health. It isn't the healthiest thing for your mental health. So I want you guys to think about this in the comment section below. Answer that question. Would you rather have 50,000 followers and make half a million dollars a year or have a million followers and make a million dollars a year? The way you answer it might reveal where your true motives and where your true intent is. So what do we do if our dreams don't come true? I would say the core isn't about your dreams, but it's more about God's dream for you. What is the King of Kings dream for you? What does God desire for you? What is God's hope for you? You know, for me, I'm learning that as I'm getting more into YouTube and I'm still making music and I'm still traveling and I'm still doing everything I'm doing, that it's, it's not about the size of the platform, but it's about the impact. It's not about the check, but what you can do with the wealth that you're building and the people you could help with. It's not about the piece of the pie, it's, it's, it's much about your peace of mind and what you are ultimately happy with. So how do we live God's dream for our lives instead of our dream for our lives, instead of our own vanity and the things that we want? How do we live that? We live that by doing things God's way. You want to see some level of success in your finances, and we all do. We live in America. I feel like God's given us the opportunity to build wealth. Are you handling your finances God's way? Are you paying off your debt? Are you saving? Are you giving? Are you being generous? Are you, are you planning with your finances? You want to see some success in your fitness. Body's your temple. God gave you a temple. You should honor God with your body. Are you doing things God's way with your body? Are you sleeping the way he wired us to sleep? Are you eating? Are you cutting out some of the junk that you know you shouldn't be eating? Are you honoring? Are you active? Are you moving around? We're living in one of the most inactive eras ever and most of us are spending way too much time sitting down and that's killing us so are you active are you are you playing sports are you going to the gym are you being are you being active you want to see success in a relationship you want to have a thriving marriage so are you dating and pursuing somebody god's way are you having healthy boundaries are you guarding your heart are you remaining pure in your dating relationships are you remaining pure with your eyes if we want God's dream and God's best for us, which is ultimately better than our plan and our dreams. I believe that. I, I'm so grateful that I did not become an NBA basketball player or a famous rap star. I'm so happy for that because God's ways and God's dreams are better. So if you want God's dream, if you want God's best for you, you have to be willing to do things God's way. And sometimes that's hard. So let's keep this conversation going. One of the reasons why I ask you guys to turn on your notifications is when I drop these videos, the first couple hours, I really be in the comment section chopping it up with you guys. Let me know, those of you guys that are artists, 
answer that question I asked you earlier, 50,000 followers and half a million a year, or would you rather have a million followers and make a million a year? I'm, I'm curious to hear from you guys because bigger is not always better. And overall, where are you at with this idea of living out God's dream and doing things God's way? Thank you so much for checking out this video. Appreciate you guys. If you know someone that needs this, make sure you hit that share button. All right, peace. It's a breeze, boy, I told you it's a breeze. Yo, it's